Let's get more on this now from our chief political analyst, Matthew Dowd, also Megan McCain here from The View. And, and Matt, let me begin with uh, this, these Roy Moore allegations really seem to have split the Republican Party. Some senators now saying they believe the weight of evidence goes against uh, Roy Moore, but the, they, they seem to be in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation with the Senate candidate. Well, the problem they have is, is that they have to pick between winning a race and principles yeah. in the course of this. And my feeling about this is the default position ought to be believe the women. There has never been an incident where multiple women came forward to accuse a powerful man that turned out to be not true in this. So I think there's two options left for Republicans. They can either support a write-in candidate or support the Democrat Doug Jones in this race. Because at this point in time, there is no way it looks like Roy Moore is going to get out of the race. Those are the only two options. Push for a write-in or support the Democrat. Megan, it doesn't seem like that's where the majority of the party uh, is going right now. And this could cause a big problem for Republicans going into next year's election, especially with women voters. A hundred percent. But I also think what's fascinating about this is Roy Moore is a Steve Bannon pick, bred, tried and true. And if this ends up sort of blowing up in our face and by some miracle, he doesn't end up becoming a senator. It really puts a silver bullet into these candidates that Steve Bannon is putting up across the country. I will say the Republican Party has a woman problem in general right now, and this certainly isn't helping things. When you're talking about the difference between a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old in the age of consent, to say this isn't the messaging we should be on right yeah, now. Yeah, he said he didn't generally likely. date high school students when he yeah, was in his 30s. It's disgusting, obviously, and I think all women, especially if you're a young conservative woman, you should be worried about the kind of messaging that sends across the country, especially given the climate we're in right now. But let me just say, four women on the record, 30 off the record. This isn't a witch hunt from the liberal media. This is something we're going to have to deal with. And I think that it's, it's unfortunate for people like Matt and I who really just want to see good candidates be put into place. And unfortunately, when you care just about populism and about winning the primary and not so much about winning the general, this is where we're at. This problem is not going away. Meantime, Matt, you also have those comments from the president about Vladimir Putin uh, over the weekend. This, this, this it raised so many questions because the president says, well, wait, I, I don't just believe Putin. I believe he believes it. But his intelligence agencies say Putin ordered the meddling in the election. Well, it's like Donald Trump on a dating site when it has a relationship with Putin, he has to check it's complicated. <laughs> I mean, he's in a serious situation here because he's got all these accusations here domestically. He wants, it seems like he wants to believe Vladimir Putin over any of its intelligence agencies in the course of this. I think he's in a very difficult spot. And I think it's very concerning that Go Donald ahead. Trump seems much more friendly with authoritarian people around the world than people that actually support human rights. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matthew, Dad, Megan McCain, thank you both very much.